a very good evening to you. Thank you so much for watching the Uganda Catholic Television. This is the Thursday edition of UCTV News. I am Sunday Gloria Abwatch. Ugandans have been urged to be vigilant and report any suspicious individuals in their communities. This follows the killing of two tourists and their Ugandan tour guide in Queen Elizabeth National Park. According to Sheikh Kasim Mugisha, the Nakawa Division RDC, the attack on unarmed individuals is a sign of cowardice. He said this in an exclusive interview with UCTV. Uganda faces threats nationwide from terrorist groups such as the ADF. Officials have attributed several attacks, including the most recent on October 17th, in a tourist vehicle assault in Kasese district and an attack against a commercial vehicle that left several people dead in the Katoja area to the ADF. Speaking to Sheikh Kasim Kamugisha, the RDC Nakawa Division, he says the attack on an unarmed tourist is a sign of cowardice from the ADF. For someone who wants to capture power using a barrel of a gun, cannot stand out boldly as a man and confront the forces, that's the UPDF, which he must defeat to take power, but opts to attack a visitor, opts to attack an, an, an armed person who is on, on, on a journey uh, uh, to enjoy the honeymoon. I can simply say it's a sign of cowardice. Uganda is widely recognized as having one of the most progressive refugee policies in the world in addition to hosting more refugees than any other in Africa. However, to some Ugandans, this policy has exposed Uganda to terrorist attacks and to others, this influx of refugees has given them a chance for enemies to flock into the country. However, Sheikh Kasim thinks otherwise. So I want us to exonerate refugees and keep posting them as our brothers, as our sisters from their countries where there is instability, and we concentrate on the current situation of terrorism, but not attached to refugees. However, our borders as a country are porous. When we talk about porous borders, we mean you can access Uganda from any point of the border. And, and, and you, you, as, as media, you get to know why America was building a wall. You get to know why. Why, why Israel is building a wall to separate it from Gaza? Because they want to have control over their borders. Now, our borders are porous. There's no control over our borders. The police and other security agencies have often called for security checkpoints at entrances of places that crowd a lot of people like churches, mosques and markets even though many have been adamant and don't obey these detectives. Sheikh Kasim emphasizes that no one is above the law, thus he has called for heightened security checks at entrances. Ensure that you yourself are secure. If you go to a bar, for example, if you go to a club, allow to be checked. Recently I was at, at, at one of the mosques in and they were doing a check. And some people were saying, why check when I'm coming to pray? See, the fact that you're coming to pray does not mean that your bar can't be infiltrated. Because in the tax way which you used to come to pray, maybe you sat with the wrong element and you, you dropped either a bomb or anything in your bag. And you're not, you're not aware of it. So we're trying to say, can we secure you? Can we secure your people who want to pray with you? Consequently, he has asked the members of the public to be vigilant and report any suspicious person to the relevant authorities. Ensure that you report the persons you don't know in your area. Or even ask them who they are. Number two, when you have not gotten to know them, share with the immediate security available. That's the LCO chairman, the defense, and the national structural units. If it doesn't help you, then very quickly I can come back. Very quickly you have got to uh, you, you have 
got uh, the office of the RCC, you have got the police report. Amid these two recent attacks, the 57th coronation anniversary of the Omsinga Renzuru takes place, Sheikh Kasim says it is a clear indication that the people of Kasese have trust and confidence in the UPDF. If they didn't have a confidence in the security of the country, that, that coronation would have been cancelled. But because the people of Kasese the people of Uganda have good confidence in what security is doing. In the work is being respective of a few gaps. That is why they can hold a mega coronation today in Kasese. And I have, I have all confidence that the coronation will be very successful. That's a lot of confidence. If there was fear, we would not have that that, that, that function take place. The Ugandan authorities continue to work to reduce the risk of further attacks. There may be additional security checks, including baggage and car searches in public places, including hotels. For UCTV News, I'm Sunday Gloria Abwatch. Opposition party DP has accused the government of running a discriminatory financial system that bails out individuals and businesses on the verge of collapsing. Details come up next. The relief package, which amounts to a staggering $66 million, reflecting over 200 billion Uganda shillings, was recently greenlit by the cabinet, sparking outrage and passionate arguments within the legislative body. Parliament, the funds are intended to serve as a lifeline for Bitature, who finds himself mired in or mingled in a $35 million debt to Vantage Mazenine, a South African-based company. Similarly, this seems to have not gone well with the opposition party, DP. While addressing journalists at the party quarters, Ismail Chiria, the acting party spokesperson, has expressed dismay over what he says government's bailout choices are only selective to friends and family. Who, who is being proposed to be bailed out? Last week, the cabinet greenlight the bailing out of businessman Patrick Vitature with a relief package of 240.9 billion Ugandan shillings. The funds are intended to serve as a lifetime lifeline of Bitature, who finds himself mired in a $35 million debt to Vantage Mezzanine, a South African-based company. However, we are seeing the relief package has indicated a fierce debate among the legislators with some vowing to block the bailout while others insist on its necessity. As the Democratic Party, we want to appreciate the system of bailing out business people, but it should be uniform, not discriminatory. The idea of bailing out Mr. Bita today is a brilliant idea, but it is discriminative in nature and selective. So we are looking at it as something which is selective and which is just looking at one person, Mr. Patrick Vitature. It's just looking out, the idea is just looking out at bailing out now friends, relatives and in-laws. Of the 20,000 businesses that officially opened in 2019, close to 12,000 have closed. Others who live to celebrate their first decade like WBS, Sembule and Zimwe have all long gone without government efforts to bail them out. Chiria has challenged the Minister of Finance to develop a uniform bailout strategy for all businesses. He also contends a favorable taxation policy. The business will not need relief from the government, thus appealing to the Minister of Finance to develop business-friendly taxation policy. We want to call upon the Ministry of Finance to come up with a uniform strategy to all business people who are struggling to be bailed out, like Maganjo, we had WBS, 
we had Sembule among others, so that we don't be selective on others because we are interested in their bail out. Ladies and gentlemen, on this very matter, all businesses in Uganda are down. And we are not seeing actually government coming out to single out these small scale businesses to see how they can bail, bail them out. And the issue is not giving them money. Because the government doesn't have money to give everybody, every business person in this country. But let us try to reduce on some taxes we levy on each and every business. According to reports, the government through the Minister of Finance entered a memorandum of understanding with the businessman to take over his Tororo Electromax power plant in exchange for relief. We are therefore calling upon government that if true that actually you want to bail out Ugandan businesses, let us be uniform. Let us have a mode which can support each and every Ugandan in the business. We have seen many people have collapsed, even the markets which we have. Those who used, who used to sell clothes, shoes, tomatoes, and so on. They are no longer in the business because the current economy is not favoring to every, every Ugandan. So if we can reduce the taxes, well and good. If we can come up with at least a package whereby at least every Uganda can know that now in case I'm badly heated, this is the criteria which I'm supposed to follow to get a bailout from, from, from government, then that will be the best thing which this government can do for every Ugandan. For UCTV News, I'm Sunday Gloria Abwatch. UCTV News returns shortly. UCTV, good news for all. I am Father San Augustine Masbreka, bring you inspiration quotes on this UCTV, and don't miss good news for all. Thank you. It's unbelievable. Now, companies, businesses, and organizations can make bulk payments easily with Centenary Bank's corporate center swift to anyone without the need of a bank account anywhere, anytime, just like that. The recipient needs only their phones, national ID, and token number received via SMS to withdraw money from any center agent nearby. The Centenary Bank's corporate center swift is simple, secure, and convenient. You think it's too good to be true? Visit any of our branches countrywide or visit www.centenarybank.co to know more. Centenary Bank. Centenary Bank is a member of Center Group regulated by the Bank of Uganda. Customer deposits of up to 10 million shillings are protected by the Deposit Protection Fund of Uganda. Terms and conditions apply. UCTV. Good news for all. And finally, from our sporting world, Busitema and Kuma Universities draw in a thrilling University League football clash. The game was played at Forest Grounds in Busitema. Semgenze Mustafa reports. <laughs> From the way it has happened, it wasn't uh, a kind of an easy thing or a good one. But of course, uh, this kind of things happen in the game. 
we came in with the energy, but of course now those are the incidences in the game you can't rule out them. But uh, all in all, we gave in our best and uh, we're hopeful we shall still get back into these games in a real gear. Of course, uh, at a certain point, you know, when this kind of game is going on, is moving on, uh, we expect that the only thing we shall only have to do is to see how to, you know, convert most of those chances into goals so that uh, the result can be good. This is Abdul Nur, head coach of Sitama University. What I can say, we had plans, but God had a better plan. So we got a draw, but, we st but in this month we still have to play them a return leg at their home and I hope that I will go to their home and get the three points from there because we can make it just that we are not clinic enough in the chances we got. We got many chances, we just converted one but we had to convert like six or seven but let us do the correction again. We know that we can make it, we can get the maximum points from them, from their home. Thank you so much, Sam Genze, for that report. And with that, makes it a wrap for our top stories from UCTV News. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember to stay informed with UCTV Good News for All. I am Sunday Gloria Aboch, wishing you a lovely night.